New York State is trying to undercut and destroy the purpose and effect of the Supreme Court's decision in Nyserpa versus Bruin that says you have a right to carry a gun outside the home for self-defense. But I don't think New York's plans are gonna work. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of The Four Boxes, Diner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and proud American gun owner. If you love the Second Amendment like we do, please hit the subscribe button and also share this video with your friends and family to spread the word about the Second Amendment. Okay, folks, you probably are reading this in the newspaper. New York State and a lot of the other anti-gun states that basically got beat up pretty badly by the United States Supreme uh, Supreme Court in Nyserpa versus Bruin is in really, as I see it, kind of an act of rebellion against the court. They're trying to do everything they can to nullify the effect of enforcing the Second Amendment's right to keep and bear arms in the state of New York. The way they're doing it is New York, of course, uh, for many years had um, basically made it impossible for most people to be able to carry guns in the state of New York unless they could show some special unique situation they had as opposed to a general desire to protect their family. So if you just generally wanted to protect your family because you're worried about crime and evildoers, that was not a basis under New York law to be able to carry. You had to show that you were somehow uniquely situated. Either you were uh, historically threatened, you were maybe, maybe high profile, uh, perhaps you uh, carried a lot of cash at night, maybe you carried diamonds, but you had to show some unique circumstance that you met in order to be able to carry a firearm outside the home in public uh, for the purposes of self-defense in the state of New York. The Supreme Court said that was not allowed anymore, that all Americans should be treated equally in the state of New York, and if they're not criminals, they should be allowed to carry guns under the Second Amendment. Now, what New York did is exactly, exactly what I told you would happen many months ago on this channel, which is that they were going to use the so-called sensitive places exception, which again, sensitive places is a phrase that we see in the Heller case in 2008 that says that Nothing about the right to keep and bear arms prevents governments from declaring certain parts of America sensitive places or gun-free zones. Now, what New York is trying to do, as I predicted repeatedly, and you all know this in the channel and you guys are talking about it too, is that New York is going to try to declare as much of the state of New York as a sensitive place as possible so that even if you get a gun permit, you're going to be it's going to be useless because there'll be nowhere you can take it because everywhere you go, you'll be banned from carrying a gun even with a gun permit. But it's not going to work, and I'll tell you why it's not going to work. It's because if you look at the Supreme Court decision in Bruin, it really does foreclose uh, this kind of nonsense, these kinds of games. Let me explain to you why. Now, of course, by the way, I want to make one caveat here. All, all this turns on who is the judge, who are the judges. Certainly, I'm guessing if, you know, a challenge to this uh, challenge on based on the Second Amendment goes up in front of some, you know, activist, radical, liberal judge, I'm guessing, uh, you know, well, it will fail. Uh, but any judge who's going to really follow what the Supreme Court wrote in the Bruin case, if they actually follow the law, which they're supposed to do, they follow the text of the Constitution, which they're supposed to do, then I think New York's ploy here is not going to work. And I will do a series of videos on the other specific things that New York is doing one at a time. But for the purposes of this video, I just want to focus on the quote unquote sensitive place, gun free zone exception, because that seems to be the first thing they're going to go with. We'll talk about the other nonsense they're doing in separate videos. But for now, sensitive places. So, first of all, what did New York define as a sensitive place? Is this a long list of them. Long list of them. Uh, just to give you an, a, a sense of it, they define airports, bars, and restaurants that serve alcohol, which is basically all bars and restaurants, um, courthouses, government buildings, entertainment venues, uh, emergency shelters, uh, places of worship, health and medical facilities, libraries, polling places, public demonstrations and rallies, public transportation, including New York City's subways and buses, and Times Square itself, as well as uh, education institutions. I'm not sure I mentioned that already. Okay, so that's what they list essentially is, all, oh, and I also should mention that they said that all private you're not allowed to bring a gun onto anybody else's property, including businesses, unless they give you express permission or they post a sign out front that says concealed carry weapons allowed. But as I told you in my prior video, I think that forcing business owners to put a sign up front that says concealed carry uh, weapons allowed before people are allowed to walk into the building probably is not constitutional for many reasons. It probably violates the Second Amendment with respect to the gun owner's rights, and it probably violates the First Amendment with respect to the business owner's rights because the First Amendment bars not only what, you know, it can't it can't prevent you from speaking, but it also cannot compel you to speak. And I think there's an argument, a very strong argument, that forcing business owners to take a position on concealed weapons allowed in the store is essentially a form of compelled speech by the government to exercise, you know, to allow people to exercise fundamental rights. So, but we're not going to talk about that. What we're going to talk about here are these other places, the 
stadiums, um, the libraries, the public transportation, Times Square. Okay, so let me tell you why I think this is not going to work for New York. If you read the Bruin case, the first thing they tell you is the burden of proof to justify any modern day gun control law or regulation lies with the government. In other words, you and I just have to sit on our butts to some degree and, and watch the government in a case prove, prove that somehow the regulation that they've enacted to violate the Second Amendment that infringes on the Second Amendment is somehow constitutional. How do they do that? Well, historically, for the last 10 years, they played a game. They used this tiers of scrutiny balancing test, and they said, well, you know, guns kill people because guns kill people. Uh, the state has a valuable interest in regulating these. The regulations and laws are upheld. They can't do that anymore. The Supreme Court says you cannot do balancing tests ever again. You can't use tiers of scrutiny ever again. They made it very clear. You can't do it. Period. Full stop. Game over. So what can New York do to show these places are uh, can be deemed sensitive places and not run afoul of the Second Amendment? There's only one approach. I repeat, there's only one thing that New York can do to justify that these places are sensitive places and exceptions to the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. That is this. They have the burden to show that at the time of our founding, at the time of the nation's founding, which I basically say is in the time period of 1760, 1760 to about 1826, which is the day, the year that Thomas Jefferson and John Adams both died on the same day, July 4th, uh, 1826. During that window of time in the founding era, that's up to the state of New York to show that during that time period, stadiums, polling places, libraries, hospitals, taverns, bars, ice cream parlors, whatever, they're trying to, they have to somehow show that at the time of our founding, when the Second Amendment was adopted, these sensitive places or something analogous to these sensitive places, you could ban guns. You could ban them. And we know, based on my research and the research of other people and discussions before the Supreme Court, there really only appears to be maybe four areas in American life during the founding where you could ban guns that were deemed sensitive places, arguably. Not necessarily, but arguably. What are those places? Well, the Supreme Court talked about them in Bruin and in Heller. The answer is this. Polling places where people vote possibly could be a sensitive place that you could ban guns. Courthouses possibly could be a sensitive place where you could ban guns. Legislative chambers, which is like the U.S. Capitol, state houses, um, you know, places where they pass the laws, could potentially be sensitive places. And then schools, but there's a caveat with schools. The historical precedent for banning guns at schools is somewhat limited during the founding era. And there's really only kind of one general example I'm aware of. And that was at the University of Virginia. And that was when Thomas Jefferson was at the Board of Trustees at the University of Virginia. They banned students. Students were not allowed to have guns on campus at the University of Virginia during the founding. But that because they were concerned that the students would engage in dueling every time they got into a fight or a tussle or anything like that. So the faculty, the professors, Thomas Jefferson, adults could carry guns at the University of Virginia at the time of our founding, but the students weren't allowed to because of a fear of dueling at the time uh, in American history. So those are the examples, the historical analogs that New York will have to draw from. And I think it's a stretch to say the least to argue that any of these government-owned facilities at the time of our founding is somehow analogous to Times Square, to the subways, to the buses. I don't think it's possible. There's another historical fact I want to mention to you that I think New York has almost certainly has not considered, um, is my guess, and that is this. Remember the stories we've talked about on this channel involving the Boston Massacre. Well, the Boston Massacre occurred before the American Revolution. It was part of the impetus that led up to the revolution. And during that, what happened there was there was a series of British soldiers uh, who opened fire on protesters or well, they were open fire on a group of Americans that were sort of protesting and yelling and screaming, uh, kind of harassing the soldiers. You can debate about what happened there. But the reason why this is so important is because John Adams, our former, you know, a founding father for sure, John Adams, the prominent lawyer of Boston, argued the case on behalf of the British officers. And during his argument in that case involving the Boston Massacre, he said that, the Bostonians, the Americans that were there that day, undeniably had a right to bear arms. They were allowed to have the arms they had. He is not denying that. No one denied they had the right to peaceably carry arms. But Adams said that the way they behaved justified his clients, the British officers, shooting them. It, that was his defense. But he acknowledged that the Americans had a right to bear arms. And the reason why I bring this up is that one of the things it looks like New York 
is trying to ban is guns at public demonstrations and protests. But that seems to fly. Not only is there no historical analog of the founding fathers banning guns at protests during the founding era, there appears to actually be historical evidence that goes completely against that because as we know, there were arms at the scene of the Boston Massacre and John Adams, one of our greatest founding fathers, said that that was perfectly acceptable to allow arms at that public protest against the British officers uh, which, of course, was what triggered the Boston Massacre shooting and the trial where Adams made this concession, which we can use as historical evidence. So the bottom line is, I think most of these places are not going to be upheld if a court follows what the, uh, what, what, what the Bruin says. So the burden is on the government to show a historical anal analog, and I don't think that's enough. I should also mention that, remember, just because a government... Just because there's a government building, that alone doesn't make it a sensitive place. There has to be something more about it. So, for example, it seems to me just because the government owns public parks with thousands and thousands or tens of thousands of acres, that doesn't make that park a sensitive place just because it's owned by the government. So I don't think that the government has a carte blanche to label everything that the government owns as somehow a sensitive place. I don't think it's that broad. I think it's necessary um, but not sufficient. Now, beyond that, I think if you look at the examples given, all the examples of sensitive places at the time of the founding were public, they were government facilities. None of the historical examples that I'm aware of sensitive places at the time of the founding were private. They were all government related. So any of these private facilities, uh, whether it be private hospitals, private churches, uh, you know, private transportation, uh, Times Square, which last I checked is private, right? It's public, public streets. All of these things would not be sensitive places historically, and I think New York's going to have a stretch to show any historical examples uh, justifying it. I also want to note that what the, the Supreme Court actually said is they specifically said that New York is not allowed to ban all guns on Manhattan and label it a sensitive place. So New York, so the Supreme Court was already aware that New York might play this game, and they specifically foreclosed it, and they said that this is what it's actually in the Bruin case. They said that we want to be clear that the Second Amendment applies to cities and urban areas just like it does to rural areas. And if you allow the sensitive place approach that what New York is doing here to just uh, take hold, it basically means that there will be no carrying of guns by private individuals in the city of New York or any of the cities in the state of New York because the whole place will be declared a sensitive place. And the Supreme Court has already said in the Bruin case that that is not allowed. Okay, um, I hope you learned a little bit something here why I think the list of these sensitive places, especially these private-based sensitive places, are not going to work for New York, in my opinion, assuming the courts apply Bruin as it's really written and the Second Amendment as it's really written. Uh, and if that happens, I think these things will be struck down. But at the end of the day, it's going to turn on who is the judge and do they follow the law or not. Only time will tell. Okay, I hope you learned something here today at the Four Boxes Diner. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And again, we'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.